majority of council in my limited window here. Uh, so let us go ahead. Um, thank you for uh, being here on a Friday evening, Madam City Manager, Director Alfaro of the Admin Services. I, I take it that uh, you are the staff members that are respectively going to introduce and provide, um, and perhaps Zach, I don't see his camera on though, but uh, the report uh, on our um, on our second, I think it is, uh, budget study session prior to uh, the approval of the upcoming 22-23 fiscal year budget. And so uh, very much looking forward to it. Uh, it does sound like we have an appetite to, um, you know, be done by 11. So let's try to uh, keep that in mind. We've had the previous study session. And so I would expect that the update that we get from staff right now is of course not the totality uh, of it, but some of the updates based upon the uh, feedback and the follow-up from our first study session. Madam City Manager, uh, would you like to introduce um, the staff report? Uh, yes, but before handing it over to Christina, I also want to remind council that we have published uh, the Q and A's, I'll call them, from the last study session. There were questions submitted and we've provided them with the answers uh, ahead yes. of this mm -hmm. session. So it should theoretically be pretty speedy. I say that and then jinx us all, but um, it's just a, you know, to complete it, the study session from before, and I will hand it over to Director Alfaro. Uh, thank you, City Manager. I'm just trying to get my slideshow up and running here. Here we go. Um, so we do have a very brief presentation this evening um, to uh, cover what has changed since the last time we were here meeting with you on the proposed budget study session. Um, we are going, this is study session number two for fiscal year 2021 proposed budget. We will jump right into the agenda where we'll cover the objectives um, we hope to achieve this evening. We'll go over uh, a timeline of events on what will help build the final adopted budget. Um, we'll talk about changes that have occurred since the proposed budget was printed on um, May 1st, and then we'll cover some next steps. The study session objectives are the same as they were when we met with you a few weeks back, is to receive comments and questions from the council and public, and then we gather those requests and we'll return with updates for the final budget hearing uh, on June 15th when the council will vote on a final budget. So there's been quite a few items that have been happening um, since uh, May that are going to um, make the final budget document. Those include the proposed capital improvement plan or CIP study session on May 4th, the first proposed budget study session, which occurred May 18th, uh, the adoption of the city's work program on May 26th, the community funding study session on June 1st. And that study session was uh, continued to this evening and we just concluded it earlier. So any recommendations um, from that, along with any recommendations that may come as part of this study session will be incorporated and build the final budget and capital improvement plan for fiscal year 21-22. So we want to get into a little bit of the dollars and what has changed. Um, as you may recall, the proposed budget as printed as of May 1st, 2021, had a total budget of $121 million across all funds, the largest of those dollars being in the general fund at $88.2 million. Um, I do want to uh, emphasize and call out our footnote here that this uh, 88 million does include or did include 20,000 for historical society and also uh, dollars allocated to two new positions, an emergency services analyst and an environmental program assistant. If we were to take the original budget as printed on May 1st um, and add changes that have happened since then, those changes would total 28.3 million with just about 2 million in the general fund and then another about um, 26 million or so between special revenue and capital projects. And in the subsequent slides that we'll be going through, they show a little more detail um, just to refresh everybody's memory on what some discussions that council has had and some items that have been brought forward. Uh, one of the biggest changes and why you see such a large amount in these two funds is that the printed proposed budget did not have funding for the capital improvement plan. And we have since added those in. That's a big portion of the changes. The second thing we want to note is when we go into the detail slides that are following, um, you won't be able to match out that 6.9 million and the 19.4 million. And that's because of the transfers out 
Um, and we have transfers out because when there's funds in the capital reserve and we need to move those funds to fund other projects, we need to do a transfer out of funds to do that. But in the detail slide, you want to just really stick to the cost of the projects. Uh, so with that, the first slide here, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on these slides. Again, this is more of a recap of what's occurred, are for items for the final budget hearing that are not uh, CWP or City Work Program items or CIP, Capital Improvement Plan items. Um, and so here you can see across the general fund and the special revenue fund, an increase in expenses of 1.8 that's offset by 243794 for a net impact of 1.4, or a net cost to the city of 1.4 million. Uh, two of the bigger items here are related to cost for four um, full-time position requests and uh, half a million dollars for legal cost in the community development department. The next slide we have here are for items for the final budget uh, related to the city work program. And so in total, the city work program is expected to increase the budget by $313,000. I do want to point out that we have removed, you will see the negative expenditure here under the RENA general plan updates. You'll see it under the new city seal, the city marketing online store, as well as the affordable housing strategy. So we've pulled those out and that gets us to this total. Uh, the next slide and the final one for details is related to the capital improvement plan. And so just a few things I want to note about this uh, slide uh, that are a little different from the um, CIP study session that occurred uh, early in May. One is that we've removed the traffic garden. Uh, the other is the 10455 Torrey Avenue improvements. I know as part of the work program item, uh, there were recommendations and direction given to council to update the, believe, the title and the narrative behind this project. And that hasn't been done at this study session as of yet, but will be incorporated in the final budget item on June 15th. Uh, the other item that I want to call attention to um, related to CIP is the defunding of the $3.5 million for a new city hall. You won't see that on this because uh, this is actually taking care of budget for 21-22. And the way we'll deal with that defunding is as part of year end, those funds will not be carried over and they will fall back to the capital reserve. Uh, the last thing I wanna point out on this slide is total projects are 14.8 million, but they're offset by a non-city funding of 385,952 for a net cost to the city of 14.4. Uh, so with that, that brings us to our next steps. Um, as I mentioned, I think several times in this presentation, we'll be back before council on June 15th, um, covering the operating and capital budget hearing and adoption, and then back to council for the new fiscal year on November uh, 2021 to cover the first quarter report. That concludes my presentation. Um, I and other directors, along with other staff, are available to take any questions. Uh, great, thank you. Director Alfaro, I'll bring it back to council for any uh, questions. I don't see hands raised from council at this time. And so council member Moore, you have your hand raised now. You have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Christina. It's a very huge binder, a lot of stuff. Thank you. Um, so I am just kind of curious and I've got a few few things I have questions about, but I'm, I'm kind of curious if um, we last year had a certain number of employees and some uh, some uh, retired. And and now I'm this uh, is a question about the new um, the, the new four full time employees. So if if somebody retired last year, is their position still uh, budgeted for um, for for backfill? Um, so it, uh, I'm just kind of wondering if if we did a did position go away or will it just it be refilled and then we're going to add four new people. Uh, that's correct. So all vacant positions are currently budgeted at uh, step three, but they are if it's an allocated position, they are budgeted and included in the budget document. So these would be in addition to those. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, so I made the request about the purchasing policy, and I see that I got the I got the um, 
I got the, the bare bones of it. But what I was hoping for is, um, and I'm just going to hold it up because I don't have a, I don't have another form of this. Was that this the table that you have, um, which was from 2013 City of Cupertino purchasing policy, um, effective um, September 1st. And I I might have gotten this from the City Attorney's office, but this was the kind of thing I was hoping to get in the if we can add this this particular page in the budget. Um, I was, I would like to see that. Uh, th now, an item of interest to me um, is under administration. And it was something that a former city manager, Brandt, added in um, 2013. So it looked like his first year on, he added a section called city manager contingency. And I personally want to have it removed. Um, so he, he added a $427,000 city manager contingency amount in the budget. And when I looked at that report, um, that budget, uh, and then the staff report, it wasn't evident uh, in the staff report um, that that contingency was added for one, when I looked at the pie chart in the staff report, you, you couldn't see the contingency amount. And I had to go digging into way back in the administration section in order to find that this had happened. And then each year it has grown so that this year, the uh, city manager contingency is 593,250 um, dollars. And and it says program contingency budgets may be used to cover unanticipated program expenses at the department's discretion, while use of the city manager contingency will require city manager approval. And so that really scares me because we already have, at the start of the administration section, we already have a um, city manager budget of $1.5 million dollars and when you go look at that particular page on the 1.5 million you'll find that there is a contingency there of three thousand seven hundred and seventy three dollars and my issue with this contingency also is that it's it's a huge number for one but the if you go back for the 2020 actual spending of the contingency amount it was only $743 so i personally um, would not want to see this contingency continue in the budget i think it was a little odd that it got added in the first place it's ballooning it's not being used and i would like to see it uh, no longer continued when i looked at the neighboring cities of campbell and sunnyvale they didn't have the contingency item uh, like this at all and uh, so i don't understand why we have it and uh, and it doesn't seem to be consistently um, utilized so for me this is something that i uh, feel very strongly about uh, removing this item from the budget. And if the city manager needs to have uh, uh, funds appropriated throughout the year, that that's what would happen. Um, that's one thing. And then another is just simply the, the concept of budget appropriations. And this is something that I need to be educated on. And that is, for instance, in the city manager budget on page 221, I see a line item that says contract services. Uh, $101,572. Now, to me, that means that that's the amount appropriated. And if the manager would need $300,000 for some reason, uh, then I want to understand, does that mean the city manager comes to city council and says, I need to have a higher appropriation, a, a higher amount appropriated for contract services for whatever reason, city council rubber stamps it says great go go on go go you know take care of that that's great um but as it stands right now my question is is the city manager allowed to go above the contract services appropriated amount without asking for um an increase thank you thank you council member moore would staff like to address the series of council member moore's questions uh, yeah, I'm going to take a stab at it. And um, so just a little bit of history on contingencies. Um, when I first arrived with the city, uh, shortly after the new city manager had arrived, um, we really dug in and took a lot of um, extra expenses out of department's budgets. 
um, and contingencies was added at, at that point as I think at a 15% level to kind of ease departments into this new way of budgeting where maybe they weren't as certain about the expenses they were going to have. In subsequent years, what we've had is we've gotten closer and closer to what we think is a more accurate budget. And so you've seen those contingencies come down. So that's just a little bit of the history behind why we have it. Um, it just, for us, it makes it easier to come to really feel comfortable coming as close as you think you are to your numbers. A lot of times we're making guesses about what something might cost or um, how things might increase, let's say water rate, something like that in the future. And that's why contingencies was brought in. On the second point um, regarding budget appropriations and if you go over, um, so budget appropriations, we look at them at the um, division level. So to answer your question, you could go over in contracts as long as you had savings in materials or, or materials would probably be the only other place potentially or in contingencies. If you had enough dollars to cover there, we let you move the funds around. We don't let you do it on employee compensation or benefits unless it's to fill an employee compensation or benefit issue. Uh, but we do give departments that flexibility to um, bust at the overall division level um, but we do watch them at the program level as well. Um, and what we do when people come, when departments come to our department asking for a budget request, the first thing that we do is ask them, are you sure you don't have, if it's a one-time request, are you sure you don't have enough dollars in your budget, any savings somewhere to be able to cover this? Are you sure you don't have enough money in contingencies to be able to cover it? If the answer to both of those are no, then we would recommend they come to council with the budget adjustment. Okay, thank you. Our next uh, council member with uh, the questions is council member Wei. Um, yes, to continue this contingency, um, uh, if, I, um, if I read this correctly, it is prudent to have to building a 5% contingency so that, you know, it, they, that the city can move forward. And if I read it correctly, it looks like the department is building a 2.5% 2, 2 contingency and another 25 in the manager's budget so that a combined is a 5%. Did I read it correctly or is it how this this is uh, being budgeted? Yes, I believe it's two. We, we split the difference between the two. Before when we had yes, it, you it, split, it, was, but it, it was combined. Five and ten. Yes, to combine become a fine, so that the, the the city actually can run. But eventually, the the city council still see how the money is spent, right? It's just that sometimes it's hard for the manager or department to come to the city council to ask for money. They have to move the contract along. So the contingent, the purpose of the contingency is to cover so that the government can move smoothly. But the council will be advised of how this money is spent. So you will see those at the quarterly updates if we've moved things around. We try to cover them if they're um, large enough items. Okay. So um, if we were covering every, so I'll give you an example. Some of our commission budgets are very small. And if they want to do something that costs $300, that's going to be a budget adjustment, adjustment for them, right? And so we don't want to be bringing a lot of these teeny tiny adjustments and making our reports very long. That's a good example of where we've used city manager contingency in the past for some of these small items. We can cover them with contingency and really focus on the bigger items before council. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, council member Wei. Um, so I'll go, yeah, council member Wei, you have your hand up. Um, so I think we can have two rounds of questions, but let me ask my questions. Um, I have a question about how the characterization of the budget from the first study session to the study, the second study session uh, has been made in, this, in your presentation. Can you go back to the slide where you indicate that? Because I, I just, I, I wonder whether the information could be provided in a somewhat different fashion uh, to the public. And as you're bringing it up, I'll, I'll let you know where my concern lies and what my question is. My concern is that when you look at the initial allocation, uh, something along the lines of um, something in the low, you know, 100 million, it, it looks like after the first study session, council basically added another 20 some odd million. And you verbally told us that 
oh, well, you know, actually that money came from capital improvement projects. Um, and so I wonder whether there is a possibility of reflecting the information a little bit more accurately rather than to say, uh, it looks like council basically added 20 to $30 million to the budget. Um, instead, indicate that the capital improvement projects budget overall was this much and council, you know, selected particular projects based upon staff's uh, report and recommendations out of this pie, right? And, and so my, my request, um, well, my first request was put was to put that slide up. So if we could put that slide up, I'd appreciate that. All right, great. Um, so keep on scrolling down. Let me try to, right, exactly. So you've got the $121 million and then uh, another 28 million, and then it, it goes to 149. I, you know, I wonder whether in your footnotes here, you could include the fact that the overall CIP asks were a certain amount and we picked and chose. And, and insofar as the uh, kind of pushing off the saving of the money for New City Hall, for example, to somewhere closer to mid-year, I wonder whether that could be reflected because that actually is a very fiscally uh, responsible and sound policy decision. So rather than you know, not really reflecting it in the numbers because, you know, at the end of the day, we've got, I think, maybe nine or 10 people watching this from the public. But if you are polling the material, you're more likely to scrutinize this. And there are more people that could be um, examining it as well. And they're not hearing what you're saying with regard to, you know, the CIPs uh, having a certain, you know, amount of allocations. So, so it, it's just the question um, as to whether that information could be provided differently. I would really appreciate it if we could actually modify this as a post um, uh, publication to our meeting uh, tonight for the study session to indicate precisely how much uh, was contemplated in the capital improvement projects and how much of that council selected. Um, and again, the concern is, you know, we had our proposed budget on May 1st, as this says here, um, and then council had an opportunity to look at it it looks like we basically just added $28.3 million to the budget, which is absolutely not, um, you know, what what was reflected here. So so, so that's my uh, request and question uh, with regard to whether that information could be provided differently. Yeah. Uh, certainly take a look at that chart and update it. Maybe okay. Try to be a little more clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm really just... I want to make sure that the information is provided in an accurate manner that um, you know doesn't mislead the public in thinking what the result of a particular study session was and what was driving the, the budgetary allocations. Okay, um, I do not see any other further hands raised. Uh, Councilmember Moore, you did have your hand raised for an additional round, but now I do see Councilmember Willie as well as Vice Mayor Chow have their hands raised. So um, I'll go to Council uh, Member Willie and then Vice Mayor Chow, uh, who haven't had a first round opportunity to ask questions yet. Uh, Council Member Willie, you have the floor. Yeah. So um, you know, previously we went over the the budget items, and so not wanting to redo that, you know, I think we're pretty good shape on those. <clears throat> and so then tonight, um, going over the changes. Um, you know, I, I uh, agree with uh, the mayor's suggestions. I personally like things to be kept as simple as possible. Transparency, I think, requires that we're not confusing uh, people. <clears throat> so I'm very happy that the uh, new city hall line item were for $3.5 million was defunded. Boom, gone. <clears throat> I'm always open to if... If the city manager <clears throat> needs to come to us and say, we, <clears throat> we would like to do something, kind of like uh, the new Tory building that we have, that they bring it to us on a per project basis and that it not be left on, you know, the, the book, so to speak, to confuse. So I'm happy with that. <clears throat> that leaves me with the, uh, the one item and I might be a little bit confused. When we previously talked, I, I was very uh, interested in um, uh, Chair, uh, Councilman Moore's um, uh, looking into the discretionary spending. 
<clears throat> so I also looked at uh, the attachment M, and uh, if I deviate from that for a second, if I'm hearing right that uh, Councilman Moore sees that there's another 1.5 million of contingency spending, uh, could we put that up on the screen? I mean, um, you know, I mean, the the uh, attachment M of 279 kind of pales in comparison to 1.4 million, and so I'd like to better understand if the, if the contingency is as uh, measure M shows, you know, I'll, I'll have a comment, but, you know, not too, too much. But if it's really 1.4 million plus uh, another uh, uh, contingency fund, then, then I'm back to transparency and uh, confusing, you know, our, our community. So this is what I had looked at. And I, I look at those items uh, for the 1920 year as uh, the previous one, and those seem fairly reasonable. So is there a 1.4 million contingency uh, bucket that's, maybe Councilman Moore could put it up on the screen? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Councilman Willie, uh, it's a little more, it's a little more, strange than uh, you realize. Um, so if I do some spot checking, for instance, it's supposed to be, uh, the contingencies are supposed to be a multiple a percentage of your materials and your contract services. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for instance, if I go to page uh, 273 of the budget, um, and I just add up the materials and contract services on that page, multiply it by 0.02 or two two and a half percent. I end up getting their contingency amount of 71,000. I just did some spot checking. So here's one. I spot checked uh, the contingencies were two and a half percent of employee. Uh, I mean, materials and contract services. And I thought, okay, let me try another one. Two, page 275. Add materials and contract services times two and a half percent, and I get the two thousand one hundred and twenty-nine dollars of contingency. Okay, so they're using two and a half percent. Let's try another one. Page 299, I add up materials, contract services, I get the same 2.5%, I get the 69,000 uh, contingency amount. I tried another one, page 427, add materials and contract services times 2.5%, and I get their exact contingency amount. So I spot checked uh, several of those. When I go to the main first page of financial overview by fund on page no page number. It's in the um, beginning of the financial schedules, page 102 under financial schedules. They have the 2020, 2021 proposed budget total. If I take materials and contract services there, um, multiply it by two and a half percent, I get close to what they have for contingencies. I get $1,056,725. Um, Okay, that, that's interesting. So that's times two and a half percent. What doesn't make any sense at all to me is when I go to administration and I look at, go to the back of administration and look at the manager's contingency, city manager contingency, there are no materials and contract services for me to add together yet there's a $593,250 there. So to me, I would get rid of this. The city manager's budget is 1.5 million showing on page 221. And if I add the materials and contract services for the city manager, multiply it by, point, by two and a half percent, I get the $3,773. So to me, this city, uh, city manager contingency it feels like a slush fund, and I would I would pull these pull this out, remove this move this remove this budget item, this five hundred ninety three thousand, remove it entirely. It's not associated to anything, um, because every single budget item in here has a contingency of two and a half. <clears throat> okay, so so if I can wrap up what what my thinking is, yeah, Councilor Willie, 
Um, yes, you, you do have the floor. Although I, I do know a, a staff member has asked to, um, to to speak. Did you want? Uh, oh Zach yeah, let let staff go first, and then I'll I'll uh, do a final comment. Okay, Zach, you're on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Council Member Moore, um, you're right that within the respective program budgets, taking the materials and the contract services at two and a half percent, you'll arrive at the contingency amounts. When we look at the city manager discretionary fund, that's calculated slightly differently. It uses a two and a half percent basis or percentage for all of the general funds, materials and contract services, but not in totality. It only looks at the base expenses. So it would exclude any one time department requests for materials or contract services and only focus on those annual recurring items. <clears throat> Additionally, um, and this was an implementation change or a change that was implemented in fiscal year 1920, where historically public works was bringing um, an unusually amount or, or historically had been providing and bringing forward on a quarterly basis, a high volume of budget requests related to unforeseen maintenance and repairs. And it was ultimately determined and recommended to increase or, or account for the, the estimated unforeseen maintenance and repairs that come in uh, or that are experienced on an annual basis and move it to the city manager's discretionary fund. And this was done really to try to increase the monitoring and the control that staff have over departmental spending, where previously public works would be responsible for addressing all of their unforeseen maintenance with these estimated budgets within their respective budget, budgetary accounts, subsequent to fiscal year 1920, and having those, those budgeted funds move to the city manager's discretionary fund, it had to go through city manager approval for its use. If it was approved by the city manager, it would then be transferred to the public works or the appropriate uh, department budget to then be, be expensed for that, that unforeseen maintenance or repair cost. Interesting. Okay, um, it's still Council Member Willie's floor. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Willie, did you want to finish your comments? At this time? Yeah, yeah, actually, I, that prompts me. So, so my request, you know, I, I like attachment M. I, my request would be that there should be a attachment N that has the breakdown that Councilman Moore had for us to kind of get a sanity check. You know, I mean, the great work that, that she's done, well, but it sure seems like we should have that as a, some, uh, you know, not a line item to look at, but as a item to look at, not having it in all these different places that we need. So my request would be that if not this year, then next year, that be brought broken out and put in an an attachment M form. Okay, that's one. <clears throat> the concept that a large volume of unforeseen uh, uh, items to me is a little bit troubling. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, I bring the, the current uh, work environment and what I'm held to in my day job, and if I bring a large volume of unforeseen uh, expenses, you know, my boss is going to be scratching his head. You know, the departments need to do their, the best job they can. They've got a 12-month uh, period to look at <clears throat> and come, you know, handle that well with things. Um, and so moving that large number of, of dollars to a discretionary fund, to me, does not put the pressure on those departments to really foresee and manage the money. Oh, we just need to project what we currently see, and then on a monthly basis, we can keep adding things throughout the year. And I, I'm sure it's done in you know with with care and concern, but to me, that doesn't fit the way industry works where people are held to budgets and you know each one gets a small buffer and so that's my second request is I think that needs to be rethought and should not be carried 
from year after year after year. <clears throat> so then the third and final one is, you know, just like I don't want to hamstring the historical society, I don't want to hamstring the city manager either. And so <clears throat> having <clears throat> sufficient discretionary spending for those unforeseen items, uh, cost overruns or something, I think is reasonable and on the size of a city as opposed to a company project, you know, it's going to be a magnitude different. But when I see that the discretionary spending is once a year, I, I get a little bit bothered that we don't necessarily have a clear understanding that we're going to get to check that discretionary spending you know, maybe quarterly is too often, but at the half year part, if the discretionary spending was 279000 in in uh, 2019 and 2020, you know, then if we carried that forward with, you know, a, uh, 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 an increase, uh, you know, to whatever it would be, 300 or 310, then we said, okay, but we would like an update at the half year point with the items, what were they and how much were they individually over? And if it turned out that, wow, we were uh, oh, uh, over by more than the discretionary thing, that gives us a chance to recalibrate and resize. Or if it lets us at least look and say, wow, were these all um, good support things for our community's, you know, expectations? And, and then, okay, good to go for the next half a year. So to me, the, the one-year checkpoint for discretionary spending to that level, I think, needs to be smaller. So that's my third point. So with that, um, thank you for all the details. A big job. I understand. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Willie. I, I'll take that as an inquiry. I did see Director Lee with his camera on and his microphone on for a while. Did you want to speak to uh, the points that uh, Council Member Willie made, Director Lee? Yes, thank you, Mayor Paul. I think just to give a flavor of some of the unanticipated items that, that may come up with public works, um, you know, we, we do a very good job at anticipating the day to day, month to month items, but we can have a boiler go down at City Hall air conditioning going down, electrical panels going down. You know, the average age of our facilities are, are measured in decades. Uh, we could have tree failures, uh, water main breaks and parks. Um, you know, just a variety of things can happen that aren't anticipated and the service needs to be provided, you know, quickly. And uh, so that's the nature of the items that may come up. It depends on a lot of conditions. Um, you, know, you just can't predict these things. But that, just to give you a flavor of what could occur and, and where we've um, have that double check with the manager's office before we proceed. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Director Lee. We next have our uh, last uh, council member on our first round of questions, Vice Mayor Chow. Vice Mayor Chow, you have the floor. And you'll need to unmute yourself if you're, if you're muted. Okay. Um. Here, I, I'll share my screen. Mm. Okay, so I asked for, for more information about how exactly the fest, list of festivals are funded. And I think the answer from staff is in the meeting packet. Appears, I think I, I asked this question back in 2019, never got an answer. And finally, I got to answer this time. And there is actually a city web page that has a application process. And all of these festivals are for, not all, for those ones that's in Memorial Park, there is an application that as long as you fill out the application, somehow it will get put on this list. And then it will be just approved together with the rest of the budget. There is no other review process, it seems. Um, um, seems to be how it goes right now. Except uh, Tournament of Bands and Heroes around that. 
somehow they are not in Memorial Park, so they have a separate um, application process. Um, initially, I, I, I asked this because I think not many people even know about this exist. I had people who asked me about waivers, and then the staff did not tell me there is this um, process. But maybe because they actually, no, I think one of the event was um, considering doing it at Memorial Park. Um, and then we, we, we were not aware of this application. So um, I am wondering, so they, I want to get a confirmation. So this, um, I mean, it, it's great that we have so many festivals because someone was just telling me that he feels there is not a Cupertino-wide community events that bring the community together. However, I see that we have so many festivals that the city is, is uh, um, sponsoring, which is just wonderful. Um, I'm happy to see all of this, but I'd like to know um, what exactly um, a, a new organization, for example, they want to host a festival. What's the process? How do they get a waiver? Similar to what these organizations are getting? Or does that only apply to Memorial Park? So how about Blackberry Farm on, or other uh, parks? So there is no fee waiver process? Because the staff answer was, if anyone needs fee waiver, they need to go through the community grant process. That seems to be a different process. The community grant was never about fee waiver. So I'm a little confused. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. Is there anyone from staff that would like to address Vice Mayor Chow's questions? Regarding I, can, I can answer those questions. Well, so at this time, yes, we do have a policy for Memorial Park festivals, and you would go onto the festival website on the city website and apply. And as long as you uh, meet all the qualifications within that application, then you do get put on this um, Excel sheet to go with the budget for council to approve. However, if you are asking for another space that is not Memorial Park, then a lot of those events have gone through the community funding process to ask for money toward their event. Um, we do not currently have a something in place for if you wanted to have a large event at one of the other sites. Partially because Memorial Park is one of the only sites that is big enough and we have the parking at De Anza to allow for large festivals. Um, but it's definitely something that we can look into if that is the direction from council. So these organizations do fill out an application every year? Yes, they do. And there is a meeting with them 30 days after their event because there is city staff at their events. And if they're not following procedures and what's in the application, then that is something that's taken into consideration the next year also. Do they automatically get approval or do they need to say on the event need to be free or needs to... Um, be open to everyone, things like that. Is there a list of criteria? Yes, in the application, there's a list of everything that they need to be able to follow in order to have their event. And then in the um, evaluation afterwards, there's also a list of things they needed to do to still be able to do their event the next year. Okay, so yeah, thank you for sending this website. And I think this is the link that all the information is provided here, which is great, including the fee waiver provided to organ organization. Very transparent, $156,000 waiver provided, that's great. And I see that uh, there is even a list of uh, community funding grant from this year, all the organization we funded. Uh, I thank you for um, putting all this information here and the sister city, the funding for the sister city, and we also have out of cycle city council fee waiver that um, somehow granted. So what is this out of cycle fee waiver? Did 
So, Christina, I'm not sure if you'd like to speak to that one. You're a little better with that than I am. Yeah, and I see that historic society is listed here also. So this is the one page is a read, very complete information. Thank you for that. Now, I'll try to cover the out of cycle fee waivers uh, real quickly. I will tell you, as my memory is not what it used to be, um, the only one I can recall was the West Valley Community Service Gift of Hope. And we did bring that back to council to let you know there was a request for these funds and if council wanted to approve them outside of the normal uh, community funding cycle. And at that point, council did. And I'm sorry, Rochelle, but I am drawing a blank on the other two items. So there, there were out of cycle. For example, council member Moore were think, thinking of making a request for a Silicon Valley woman. And that could be made as an out of cycle request like this. So there are, is precedence for that. So there is, we have been trying to get everything to go through the different ways that we actually have, like the festival process or the community funding process. But yes, a group is allowed to go to city council and ask, and it's definitely in your guys' purview to then decide on that money. Yeah, I thought I was on the council at that time. I don't remember this bingo room use. Mm. Okay, maybe I missed that. Okay, so for the community members, I think there, there is the link for festival information. If you click on that, there is the application that the staff mentioned. Um, this one is approved, I think, in 2017. And I see that there is very detailed information on what an um, organizer would need. And I do see that, I guess, there is uh, chart, a list of requirements, very detailed application. So if one organization goes through this application, they this is specifically for Memorial, 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 Memorial Park festivals, right? Correct. Okay. And then if anyone wants fee waiver for other facilities or parks, they would go through other process. There is an Right now, there is not an application form. Correct. So like I said, the other areas that people have hoped to do something larger don't always um, allow for those kind of events. So we don't have anything currently in place, um, but there's you know, definitely the community funding policy process. There's been a lot of events that go through that. So that's definitely an option. Mm, for example, the tournament of bands, I think we added that in 2016 or 19, maybe. And um, so that one is, is only around the Cupertino High School. That's a separate one. Yes, so the okay. tournament of bands and the heroes run go through PW for specific permits because they are um, events that have street closures with them. Okay, so I think, okay, I think one organization was thinking of, um, they were hosting like bike, um, bike ride, then likely they, they will need this other kind of fee waiver right, in case they want the fee waiver from the city for different permits, or even sheriff support, right? Yeah, if how would they go about it then? So if they're looking to actually shut down streets, then they would really go through PW to talk about specific permits. Um, if they're just looking for a place to start and end their bike ride, depending on where it is, they can put the request into Parks and Rec and we can have that conversation with them to see if it's feasible. Then what I mean is, how would an organization request a fee waiver? So it really depends on what they're asking to do. So if they're doing a bike ride, let's say, and they want to start and end at Memorial and they're not shutting down streets, then they could fill out this form. If they want to do something that's going to shut down the roads, then they need to go through the actual permitting process for the city to shut down streets to do their event. Mm, okay. Um, thank you so much. Great information on the website. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Um, there, there are two ways we can go about this now. Uh, everyone has had their opportunity to ask an initial round of questions. 
I could limit everyone to about a minute of a follow-up round of questions, or I could go to our, our members of the public. What's the pleasure of council here? Um, I, I do want to provide that opportunity to have you know some follow-up questions, but uh, in the interest of time, and I, I've been tasked with budgeting. Um, council members Moore and Way, you have your hands up. Uh, are you okay with us going to the members of the public? Uh, if not, then we'll allocate a minute for uh, for follow-up questions at this point. Um, Council Member Moore, um, just for that question. Uh, please go ahead to members of the public. That's that's fine. Yes, please. I agree. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, uh, both Council Members Moore and Wake. Uh, I'll go to members of the public now and remind everyone that uh, once the first member of the public has uh, concluded speaking, you'll need to have your hand up in Zoom in order to be called on. Right now, there is one member of the public uh, with a hand raised. That is Jean Bedord. Welcome, Jean. You'll have three minutes. Kirsten, can you put up my slide? Good evening, Mayor Paul and council members. My name is Jean Bedord, and I am a resident of Cupertino. I'm going to get out of the weeds now and express my concerns about a higher level, which is some of the priorities baked into the budget for this year. The budget's a long document, and well, I guess that's to be expected for a $149 million budget to operate the city. It takes a lot of hard work to put this together, and I commend our city manager and the staff for making it relatively readable. I think it's a tribute to them that our financial picture is as strong as it is. However, I do have some concerns about the priorities in a couple of these departments. Next slide. The first department is the city attorney. I still question almost $2 million for legal costs for a city of our size. Of course, there are the routine legal matters and litigation seems to consume our city, and it's likely to increase given the actions of this council. The number of closed sessions has steadily increased in 2021, and the scope has increased to three lead attorneys. Let's compare that to mid and long-term planning. This is budgeted at 1.524 million, I'm sorry, 1,524,188, with only 2.5 FTEs. This is the department which has major responsibilities for the updates to the general plan regarding RENA and the municipal code, as well as CEQA and the coordination with local, regional, state, and federal agency. Quite a broad scope. These planners are important to the development of our city over the next five to 10 years but they are funded at a lower level than the lawyers. Furthermore, loss of just one senior planner will have a major impact on the planning function for the city. My ask of this council is to consider increasing the planning budget with a mid-year adjustment. The city should be spending money to benefit the residents, not full employment for lawyers. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. And I do not see other hands up at this point. Uh, and so we will bring it back to council. Um, I'll ask a, a quick follow-up question to our city attorney's office. Uh, Madam city attorney, how is the budget looking this year with regard to our projected uh, expenditure from the current fiscal year? Um, just a, a rough estimate in terms of how the projected um, budget versus the actual buildings look like? I think we'll probably come in about 400,000 under budget, maybe 300,000, 300,000 okay. under budget. And so with regard to the leveling of an accusation that we're becoming overly litigious and we're having too many closed sessions, um, is it fair to say that a lot of our closed sessions this year have been for the purpose of making sure that council is apprised of what the legal and uh, the legal obligations are on an ongoing basis, on the monthly basis that we've been holding these meetings? 
Yeah, as, as mayor, you've been calling monthly litigation updates to have status updates on um, pending litigation. And have you found that that has in some way, and forgive my colloquialism, uh, blown our city attorney's budget this year? It's added to it, but we're still under budget. Hey, we're in fact quite significantly under budget, are we not? That's correct. Okay, and so would you would you think that a characterization of us having been fiscally irresponsible with our legal budget is valid uh, for what you've seen for the majority of this fiscal year? I'll say we're, I expect us to come in under budget. All right, thank you, Madam City Attorney. Mm -hmm. I'll bring this back to council for other commentary um, as well as follow-up questions. I see hands raised from council members, Willie Moore and Vice Mayor Chow. Council member Willie, you have the floor. Yeah, so I, I won't, <clears throat> won't go over what I had already went over, but I'll just say that, <clears throat> you know, I, I really don't want the uh, city manager or the departments uh, to feel they're being micromanaged. I would just like to feel that <clears throat> the, the uh, practice that's held in industry, you know, uh, is somewhat uh, similar to how the uh, uh, city and, you know, holding uh, project managers, uh, you know, like myself, to budgets, making me project it as close as I can. If I'm consistently over budgeting or consistently under budgeting, I'm going to have raised eye eyebrows at, at review time. And so just putting that where I feel it is more appropriate at the department level, rather than pulling them all, all the contingency over to a city manager budget for uh, uh, control, I, I, I wonder about that. Now, I'm also very open, I think I'm also very open-minded. If that really is a typical and standard practice for city government, you know, I'm, I'm open to it if you let me know that. If, if our uh, finance, you know, looks at the communities around us, and if we're following similar practices to them, whether it's uh, Sunnyvale or Saratoga or Mountain View, then I say, okay, great, you know, don't change what you're doing. But if we're doing it different than them, then I would be inclined to say, I, I think we need to really look at, you know, moving, you know, all this contingency funding, you know, to, to one person's budget or bucket. So again, I don't want to hamstring people, just want to be sure each person is uh, utilizing their full uh, uh, experience to make the best planning and uh, projections as possible. And they need uh, the impetus to do that. So I'll leave it at that. Hopefully we can move forward uh, after this review tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Willie. Next, we have Council Member Moore. The other floor. Okay. Thank you. So, I, I submitted uh, some written comments, which are a combination uh, of the subcommittee, the audit subcommittee on um, budget formatting, and my own comments on on the budget. Uh, one of the one of the asks that I have is that the organizational charts reflect the Cupertino Municipal Code. Um, including adding the date on the organizational chart um, and that the, the municipal code should reflect the current organizational structure. For instance, we don't have an IT department in the, in the municipal code, so we need to do some cleanup in the municipal code um, to, to reflect this. Um, some of the committees, because there's a section on uh, council, um, council and commissions, um, we do have some committees uh, which use staff time, which seems to imply that they are, would have a budget amount associated with it. And they are one, not codified, but they're also not showing up in the budget. So that would be the Economic Development Committee, um, Disaster Council, and the Fiscal Strategic Plan Committee. So that, that um, needs some clarification. Uh, it's uh, to my knowledge, we didn't actually approve the new logo in the work plan yet. The seventy-five thousand dollars is in this budget. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so I'm curious there. Uh, 
And I pulled, um, and if anyone else is interested in doing this, uh, the easiest way to find it is through resolutions in uh, the Cupertino records, the city records. But I pulled all of the accounts payable um, for last year, and then I then pulled out of that the, the credit card charges and found that our, our monthly credit card bills for about you know, around the low 40s, 40 to 45 individuals, um, are ranging from 35,000 to up to 95,000 per month, um, which would be about um, $500,000 uh, for the year. And uh, that's a, a very large amount of money that would then, I guess, be allocated to individual uh, departments. And that to me is would be a really big headache uh, to, to try to follow and, um, so I think that's a, a practice that, that uh, I would like to know what, what those charges actually are, uh, you know, uh, see, the, see the statements and look into that. And I think that the audit committee would be the right place to do that. Um, with regards, going back to the contingency amount. Um, so I completely disagree with the, the manager's contingency and the math in my mind doesn't work. And here's why I say that. Because every single section in here you can take the materials and the contract services amount, add them together, multiply it by two and a half, and get the contingency. So every one of these, every one of these budgeted areas has the two and a half percent contingency. Every single one. So when you look at the top page, on uh, page 102, when you look at that page and you see the materials and the contract services, you add those together, multiply that by two and a half, that should equal the same as each of those subsections that you, that you have in this budget, which means that there is no, there are no materials and contract services to add together to create, to end up with, when you multiply by two and a half, to end up with the manager's contingency. It's not based on any material or contract. You see what I mean? I, I hope that makes sense. Um, so I, I, it, was, it was added in out of the blue. I want it removed out of the blue. It's gone. So every single one of those departments has contingencies baked into every single part. Every part of it has the 2.5%. There's no cause for this $593,000. And in fact, when you look at it, when you look at it and you go back to the previous, the previous years, 2020 in particular, $743. If the city manager needs the contingency amount, they have it already on their budget. They have a budgeted amount of $1.5 million. And on that note, when you're talking about how much the attorney's fees are costing, in 2019, the manager's budget was $741,000 actual, 2019. Now we're asking for 1.5 million, and on top of that, 593,000 of contingency. We're at $2.1 million going back from 741,000 in 2019. That doesn't make sense to me. So that's why I don't think this contingency amount makes any sense at all, and the math is not working for me. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Moore. Next, we have Vice Mayor Chow, followed by Council Member Wei. Um, I had the uh, other question. Oh, sorry, I don't, my video is off still, sorry. Um, I had a other question earlier, but then I thought I should respond to the comment about city attorney. I think I can, the city attorney explain, besides some high profile cases, what other things the CT had to deal with in closed session, for example, uh, sidewalk accident, the backyard, the shed, the dispute, that the public may not be aware of in general terms. Yeah, we have um, a, no a couple of tort cases against the city that involve trip and fall um, incidents on local sidewalks. Uh, Yes, we have a code enforcement manage, uh, uh, litigation that involves an illegally constructed shed that the city is trying to have removed and it's been a lengthy process. There's 
potential initiation of litigation that the city considers. Um, and of course, now we're doing uh, uh, recruitment related to city attorney and city manager. Um, so yes, we have a, a number of pending litigation that um, is kind of code enforcement uh, tort cases that cities routinely have. And uh, so the city attorney um, has also been working with the county on environmental issues regarding the site, which this council has supported that the previous council didn't support, right? It, yes, that's a large chunk of the city uh, attorney budget at this point is um, commenting on the, the Le Lehigh and Stevens Creek quarries applications to the county. Yes, yeah, so this, this uh, large chunk of cost is really benefiting the residents. And then also, um, when a project applicant continues to push the envelope of what's permitted, what's allowed under municipal code and fire code, and challenging the impact fee, and not submitting complete information due to the streamlined process, could a city planner handle such a case? Or would uh, maybe a planner who works in a legal firm, legal firm better qualified to handle such case? I think that takes both planners and attorneys to be involved with. Mm -hmm. So in this kind of case, we do need these planners and then be, be involved. Uh, and your firm actually have city planner that's involved in the case too, right? Um, in Lehigh matters, they do, yes. Okay, thank you. And then uh, back to my earlier question is, I yeah, I, I agree that we didn't support a new logo for the city. I think um, at this time, that's an extra cost. And uh, I think um, council members have asked earlier, what exactly were the fee waivers for Cupertino Society for renting Quinlan Center? I hope we get an answer on that. And then also any fee waivers for Chamber of Commerce for their monthly legislative action meeting. And I'm asking this for purpose of transparency. Um, I think I do support both organizations for using the city facility and for the city to give, to give waivers if we do. Uh, we just need to be transparent on what service we provide. And another question is um, economic development manager. And as we understand, we are hiring uh, it used to be a part-time position, but now we are moving to hire a full-time position because Cupertino really needs to work on um, economic development. But I don't, is that a part of the budget item? I, is that adjusted? Because I thought that would cost more. I don't see that as in the request. Approved position because it was occupied shortly ago, so. It's approved and we have salary behind it. Um, I also wanted to address the comment about the city logo. If you uh, go back to um, the presentation slides, it's been defunded, so it's not part of that. We have to incorporate you know, what was approved in the work program. Um, and then I'm thinking that staff may want to respond to uh, some of your earlier questions and of course, perhaps the increase that um, Council Member Moore uh, was talking about with regard to the city manager budget because we have made some shifts. So I think she mentioned something like 740,000, a 740,000 budget, and now it's up to one point something. I just don't remember what that change was. Mm, Zach or anybody else? Sure, Mr. Mayor, if it's okay. Oh, yes, please. Uh, Zach. So um, I think there were a couple couple components to Councilmember Moore's question regarding the administration department, specifically city manager's office. Um, but in regards to the the historic growth of the department's budget, a lot of that had to do with the transfer of other divisions into the administration department, namely video moved from I or innovation and technology department to administration. Um, as for the contingencies. Going back to, to page 102 or 103, I believe, of the proposed budget, um, I do agree when we look at the materials and contract services and try to back into the contingencies amount, we're not going to quite get there. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is 
the contingencies line item on a comprehensive schedule includes both the city manager's discretionary balance as well as all the department's contingency balances. And I wanna focus on, on how the city manager's discretionary fund, how that 500,000, 500 plus thousand dollar balance is calculated. Again, we're taking, well, that fund takes into account all of the base materials and contract services within the general fund, and it takes 2.5%. Um, this was cut in half in response to COVID-19 as part of the 2021 budget. So historically, it used to be 5%. It was reduced to two and a half. And the reason why we're not seeing that direct approximate 50% decline year over year is because it was the same year that we had also established the public works um, contingency amount approximately $287,000. And as Director Lee had alluded to and, and spoken to about the unforeseen maintenance, effectively staff wanted to exercise a bit more control over those contingency balances. And that was why it was moved from Public Works Department to the city manager's discretionary fund um, and kind of a little bit of, of background on how those balances changed. Um, as for fiscal strategic plan and, and other committees where we're not seeing staff time charged. That is generally due to um, a, a practice for um, the, the threshold of staff time that is estimated for each individual committee. Um, we generally will apply a 5% threshold to make a determination as to whether it's gonna be charged to and incorporated into the budget. Um, a good example of this is the audit committee. Historically, it hadn't been captured in the budget and in recent years, it started exceeding the 5% estimate for staff time, and now we're seeing, we're seeing it being captured and charged accordingly. Um, for credit cards, certainly appreciate the comment. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything um, anything for the, the fiscal year 21-22 budget um, that, that could address those concerns, but I will remind City Council that the Internal Audit Work Program um, will be coming um, in the next month or so. For, um, for acceptance and, and, and approval. And our, our independent internal auditors will move forward um, with a focus on, on procurement, in fact, um, initially. And I believe I believe that was it. City Manager um, Bang was correct about fiscal strategic, or not fiscal strategic, excuse me, for the new city seal, that one um, is recommended for defunding in accordance with the adoption of the city work program. Cool. Sure. So, last question. question. Um, with regard to um, the use of facilities by some organizations as um, reflected or perhaps not reflected on the budget. Um, so specifically for the Legislative Action Committee meeting of the Chamber of Commerce, has that ever been subjected to a fee waiver or is it some kind of informal process uh, through which they use our, our community hall for uh, their monthly meeting? Um, I see Councilmember Moore with a, a hand raised and, and her actual hand raised. So, um, Councilmember, did you want to elaborate upon? But you, you asked the initial question. I'm simply trying to get at a, some information from staff on, on that question. It was the vice mayor that asked the question, but when I went through accounts payable, I kept seeing a $500 reimbursement. Um, so, it, it, I think that it's $500 uh, that gets reimbursed to the Chamber of Commerce. That's, that's my hunch. Um, maybe the staff can give us an answer later. I do have one final no, I, question about I the think, attorney's office budget. How is that um, estimated for the coming year since we are changing how from contract to in-house? I'm just curious how. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, Vice Mayor, thank you. That's a great question. Um, but we did see, I did see one staff member with a camera on and a microphone unmuted. So if you had a quick answer to that, Rochelle. Yeah, so the $500 that's going back is actually the um, deposit. Everyone has to pay a deposit even if they get a room for free. Um, but that is actually something that is run in accordance with the economic development manager. So it is considered a co-sponsored with the city. And so they do get the room for free for those meetings. Okay, so the economic development manager is basically been tasked with the, or been empowered with the ability to um, grant a fee waiver, essentially, is, is that, well, I, I, I guess maybe the terminology wouldn't be. Yeah, we don't consider it a fee waiver because it is co-sponsored with the city, but you're on the right track. <laughs> okay, well, I, I think I, I have the correct net effect there. 
Um, okay, so we've got the answer. Thank you, Vice Mayor Chow, for uh, tolerating that um, before your uh, next question. Um, Madam City Attorney, there was a question with respect to, or, or perhaps this goes to our financial team, uh, or with respect to how we are going to reflect uh, the upcoming um, uh, potential change from our city attorney's office to being contracted out to a law firm to having an in-house attorney, uh, once again, as consistent with the vast majority of, of the history of our city. Um, who would like to take that? I see Director Alfaro, you have your uh, microphone off. So um, Yes, if, I, I can take the question if that's okay, Heather. Um, so what we've generally done when something is in flux is we've let it ride the way it was the year prior. So we've left the budget with the contract services line item in there. Um, when a city attorney gets appointed and they figure out what level of staffing they want, we'll come back to council and we'll talk about how we're moving the funds from contracts into uh, employee compensation and benefit, potentially materials, and then shuffle around some of the contracts. So since we don't exactly know what's going to happen, we kind of leave it the way it, it, leaving it the way it is, and then we'll make those adjustments when we know more. Okay, very good. Thank you, Director Alfaro. Um, Madam City Attorney, do you have anything to add to um, Director Alfaro's answer? No, I think the, that's my understanding as well, how, how we've set the budget going forward. Great. Could I comment on the chamber um, meeting? Sure, you saw it before, Madam So, if I think the city staff also attend the meeting to provide updates to the business com community, which is great. I like this relationship that we build with the business community. However, if this were an event that's actually sponsored by the city and uh, under the economic development uh, department, the event should be advertised as such, as we are requiring all the other people who are requesting grants that they need to specify this grant is event is sponsored by the city. But the Chamber Legislative Action Committee meeting did not specify that when they advertised that. So maybe going forward, they should make that clear so that every community, Cupertino residents would feel free to attend. I, I think they do open to everyone, it's just, I did attend even when I wasn't a member and they were welcoming to others. It's maybe that should be more clarified, yeah. Yeah, well, that, that was actually a change that I implemented as the legislative action chair between, um, I believe it was 2010 to 2013 to uh, you know essentially invite members of the public in. And um, yeah, the utility of community hall was, um, I, I think a, a good segue, but members of the public are invited there as well. and. I think part of the reason that they need the larger space than the Chamber of Commerce and boardroom is that, um, you know, it did become a, a rather popular um, meeting, but, uh, you know, point really well taken. And, and, you know, these are good discussions from a lot of different sectors of our community that uh, happen on a monthly basis. And not only that, they actually invite some speakers uh, throughout our region um, and even the state that have uh, quite a bit of political poll. So they're, they're good meetings to let people know about. Um, yeah. So next we have Council Member Wei, followed by Council Member Moore. And after Council Member Wei's comment, I'm gonna um, invite a motion. Uh, I, I think we've heard uh, concerns on a couple of different fronts and some that have been addressed by council, uh, by staff rather. And so after Council Member Wei's uh, round of comment, uh, finishes out the round of comment following um, public commentary, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion with respect to what we'd like to um, give staff as direction for the result of our, uh, our of our second budget study session. So, okay. Councilman Way, uh, welcome back. And, thank uh, you, Mayor Paul. I really want to thank um, Council Member Moore and Vice Mayor Chair, Chair uh, Chow. Asked a lot of questions, and I we get the answers. So, um, I so when we first when Council Member Moore first came on this. Council in November, we had a big budget book. So this is the second time I'm studying this budget book. So from very clearly, if you look at the city manager's budget of 1.5 million, it's employee compensation, employee benefits, materials, contract services, they're all legitimate budget. And so I, I think um, the budget tells us uh, really clearly. I want to go back to the contingency. In our budget, in our 
package, there is a um, CFOA's policy template on the pooled contingency policy, budgetary pooled contingency policy. I don't know how to share this, but it makes sense. Okay, so here, here's what I hear from um, the staff, and I've learned on both my study on this. The 2.5 on the department contingency is for materials and contract, and, and it needs to have that, okay, because there are, you know, this is a we're operating a big city budget. So the 2.5% contingency actually is very reasonable. Actually, the reasonable contingency is 5%. So to have another 2.5% for the annual recurrent items goes to the managers, city managers' contingency actually is a prudent procedure because then the manager oversees the department's 2.5% contingency. It's another layer of a check and balance. And I, I understand our council, like, I would like to know where, how it's spent. But if you look at our history, our city manager doesn't spend all the contingencies. It's there just in case there's something major comes up. So I think if we can get a quarterly report from the city manager, how, how the contingency is spent, I think that's reasonable. I like tend to agree with um, council member Willies. You know, this, we don't want to bind our managers and staff's feet that they can't move things forward with like director Lee said if there's an emergency the city needs to move forward fast and they can come back to the council but they will report back to us I really think a five percent contingency of, of the whole city budget is a reasonable contingency but of course we want to double check and be transparent so why don't we build in some um, layers of um you know, a quarterly or bi-monthly report, or there is a contingency spending, the manager can report to us right away. So I think that's a check and balance thing. And I really think a 5% contingency on our city work plan, our city budget is a reasonable contingency for our city to move smoothly. But check and balance is what we're, we can really look into it. As for um, committee budget, you know, a lot of little committees, I think the staff did answer that. The, the disaster committee, it takes a very small percentage of staff time. That's why they didn't put it into the budget. I, I guess they can my, they can wave it into it. So I just think that this contingency policy that we have in our um, package spells it really clearly. Why do they want to pull the contingency? That 2.5% two, two for the city manager to have it is to check and balance and also to pull it together so the city manager actually can approve a very if something really big happens i think we need flexibility for our staff our city manager but yes check and balance how can we find a satisfactory way for council members to check and balance the contingent spending i think that's the i would think that would be the topic we want to really work with so um yeah i got a lot of answer from uh, council member Moore and uh, vice mayor chess questions so i really appreciate that and i think this is the second time council member Moore has studied this big budget book so we kind of really familiar ourselves with it. So that, that would be my comment. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, well, thanks, Councilmember Boy. I'll, I'll just put this in a comment. I'm not going to put it in a motion. I think one of the ways that we reflect very large items in our budget, I think, could be clarified a bit. And, and those are transfers out from fund to fund because those do affect a rather, rather large number. So, so, you know, it, it might be a good idea to... You know, kind of preface a lot of that data uh, with the nature of how that that money is moving, and essentially, it's not being spent; it's moving from one fund to another, as classified. Um, I, I want to make a comment before there's a motion. Um, you know, I, I, I think the responsible financial thing to do when we're looking at um, a, a fairly large contingency budget that is. Um, I wouldn't necessarily tie it to a percentage of the overall city budget. I think if you're looking at the city manager's contingency budget that um, council member Moore is referring to, in my experience, what we've done is when there is a need, right? And, and, and the need is reflected by um, whether we're being asked to go into special meetings for the purposes of making uh, approvals that need to be made um, or, or at least considered uh, on a relatively quick basis. If that's happening sequentially and frequently, then there's an examination of that contingency budget uh, and, and we're going, okay, there, there is this, uh, we're in a period of time, you know, uh, irrespective of what that might be, where we need that kind of financial flexibility. 
if you look at the spending, as Councilmember Moore had indicated in this past fiscal year, uh, for that particular contingency, it's quite low. Um, and so I think that the response, the check and balance, as Councilmember Way puts it, is to adjust that to effectively what the uh, environment reflects. Um, so, so I think that's within our discretion. And, and the check and balance is, I think, this. When we get to another point, and in my experience, in, in my seventh year on council now, what ended up happening is when we did get to that point, even mid-year, um, that's when the contingency initially uh, increased uh, to the point where we're at right now with respect to that $593,000 that, that Councilmember Moore is, is, is pointing out. So I, I think there's flexibility in that. And, you know, I agree, it's not tied to materials and costs of a, of a contract. I mean, it is pegged to, you know, the overall budget, but, uh, you know, from a fiscal uh, responsibility-based perspective, I think we actually have a bit of an obligation to examine that and say, well, at this period in time, um, you know, it's, it's uh, I wouldn't characterize it as slush fund, honestly. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think, I, I think that implication is sort of like, well, you know, and, and, and maybe it's been used to, you know, untoward effect. I, I don't think it's been there at all, but I, I do think it represents a very large um, amount of funding that you wouldn't necessarily say this is justified by our, our recent history. Um, and, and so if we're to go forward with the amount, I, I would want to say, hey, what's our basis? And if we basically uh, say to ourselves, well, our basis should really be based upon what we've seen and witnessed in the immediate past, with the understanding that if we're getting into, into a situation where we're being asked to come back repeatedly within a couple months, hey, need this allocation, hey, need this allocation, um, then we can start asking that question again and then reallocate. So, so I would actually support um, a, a motion to, uh, you know, essentially pare that down, uh, if if not all the way down, uh, then then quite significantly. Um, so that's my comment. I see Vice Mayor Chow has a hand raised. Uh, and and, and, uh, by, and and council member more as well. I want to remind everyone that um, I'd like to entertain a motion at this point uh, before we move on uh, for further commentary. Council member more, you still have your hand up. Would you like to set forth a motion? Okay, so you're looking for a motion that's going to have all the various uh, changes in it, or, uh, yes, or motion, can I, can I move the that we approve the budget? Uh, is that what you're looking for? A motion to approve the budget? Not at nope. this point. Well, I'm, I'm looking for a motion to provide the direction to staff and, and then also a recorded um, support for that motion so that uh, staff has clear direction um, backed up by a vote. Okay, so well, I move that we, we request staff to, uh, well, two things. Uh, the, the economic development um, budget unit 171-705 and 112-705. Um, they, they need to be um, rectified. Uh, the uh, 2019 actuals um, don't match. And it's also currently showing zero full-time, I guess it's full-time employees for uh, total current positions when that staffing might be different. I, that just needs to be reviewed, um, but I would like the uh, city manager contingency uh, discretionary amount, which is pages 244 and 245 to be struck from the budget and we return to our, our previous uh, um, contingency amount, which was uh, zero. And the, that's, I think that's the prudent thing to do. So that's your motion. Would anyone like to second council member Moore's motion? I'll go by hands. Well, for the purposes of moving our discussion forward, I will go ahead and second council member Moore's motion. Uh, a show of hands with regard to discussion of the motion on the table. So it seemed like a, a point of clarification that council Moore was requesting as well as an adjustment to the uh, draft budget uh, particularly within the, the city manager's um, contingency budget. So I don't see any further hands raised. Council Member Moore, you have raised your hand again. Um, did you want to make comment as to the... Um, yes, I just a comment also with, with regards to the budget um, that the, the movement between the departments 
of uh, different items. Um, it makes it very confusing to follow the budget. Um, for instance, economic development seems to bounce between community development and the city manager's office. And it's done that back and forth. And I think that's why I'm seeing some relics of the, the actual funding amount um, from 2019. It's not matching in those two sections. And, uh, and it makes it very difficult. And that's why, you know, when I make the, the, the statements about the, the municipal code needs to be matching these organizational charts, um, we need to have some more, in my opinion, more stability between what is in each, each department in the city and not have things go back and forth. Because when I look in the budget, and for instance, when I look up economic development, in one section, it ends up showing dashes. I can't find out how much the budgeted and actual amount was. I have to flip to the new section where uh, economic development is re residing currently, and that makes it very confusing. That's also the same with um, video division having moved over. So, and, and why, while staff said, oh, well, the manager's budget is increased because these parts came into it, but you also had economic development move out of it. So trying to add all that up, you know, while you're trying to understand the budget is, is quite a task, but you had movement going both ways. So I, I don't know ultimately what the, what the real answer is for, for the budgetary increase. Um, and when the budget does come back, if it does have that discretionary amount in there, I will not approve it. The manager's discretionary fund, I, I won't approve that. And especially, you know, kind of tying into the credit card um, amounts. And then, you know, you also have to have the realization that we did not have a, a complete and still don't have a completed um, CIP budget. So when we're looking at the budgeted amounts, I'm not entirely sure that this is uh, and an equation of this plus this plus this equals this at this point, as opposed to an expression. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, um, Councilmember Moore. And I should say that um, I do appreciate your service as well as Vice Mayor Chow's service on the audit committee. Um, and you're both on the um, budget subcommittee that I helped to create while I was on the audit committee, looking at the format of budgets. And um, you, you really do seem to have approach the, the, the task in full force in your brief amount of time in council. Um, I don't see any further hands raised at this point. Uh, Councilmember Willie, you just raised your hand. And so you have the floor. There's a motion on the table. Um, and so please uh, try to direct your uh, commentary to the motion, or if you have any suggested changes, uh, please uh, state. Yeah. So um, if the discretionary standard spending is going to stay in the uh, respective departments, great. Then I go back to attachment M, where the uh, 19, 2019 to 2020 discretionary amount was 279K, but in there it said additional plan check appropriations, 205K, which um, I think that type of a quantity should come back to the city council. So if I remove that from the 279, that would leave, you know, like uh, 75K. I would think that the city manager does need, you know, a discretionary amount to be able to make decisions which cost money. And, uh, you, you know, no matter what it is that, uh, whether or not uh, we need to um, move in some furniture or, or uh, you know, get some consulting service for, for something for the uh, uh, city hall, you know, she needs to have some, some money rather than be stuck until she comes to the city council meeting. So I would say a friendly amendment uh, to the uh, amount for discretionary spending for the city manager. Again, this is not the individual respective departments. They've got their contingency. This is the city manager for city manager type functions to the tune of say uh, 75,000 for the year. And uh, the check-in uh, like uh, Councilman Way uh, said at at least the six month or quarterly uh, just to let us know, and it, it could almost be in the city manager update time saying, you know, the contingency for this quarter 
came in at uh, uh, 17,000, you know, and, and these were the three main components and that we don't need to de even debate it. You, we're, we're up to date. So friendly amendment to the tune of 75,000 for discretionary spending for the city manager. Uh, thank you, Council Member Way. As the movement, Council Member Moore, would you accept that friendly amendment? I would, but I would like to have some additional information, and that is I would like to know what the city manager discretionary uh, budget amount is for uh, Sunnyvale, Campbell, and Mountain View as a comparison. So I'd like to have that information, but I, I do uh, support the friendly amendment, but I would like to know uh, what our surrounding cities are doing. Okay, uh, thank you, Council Member Moore. And so I take that as an acceptance of the friendly amendment with an addition uh, of staff direction to uh, provide that information as you uh, stated in our next visitation of the uh, budget, which uh, please remind us, uh, city staff, when will that be? Is that June 15th at our regularly scheduled second meeting in June? It is June 15th. Okay, so uh, that would be uh, added to the motion for that staff direction at that time. Um, yes, and, and thank you. I would just like to um, uh, at least partially address uh, one of the other concerns I heard from Council Member Moore with regards to the change in staffing and the different levels. When, when video came from IT into um, the city manager's office, uh, it came in with about 3.5 work years if, or FTEs, if I'm not if I'm remembering correctly. And then the economic development um, manager was a uh, 0.75. So that would be the difference in the budget um, push, the, the, the departure and the addition. Okay, thank you, Madam City Manager. I will go ahead and uh, accept that as the second. Uh, Council Member Moore's acceptance of the friendly amendment as well as the uh, incorporation of staff direction is stated. I see uh, hands raised from council members Way and Moore. And so council member Way, you now have the floor. Just a quick, um, I would like to ask also to find out what other cities contingency percentage is. Just, you know, Campbell, Sunnyvale, what is their uh, materials and chunk contract and annual recurring fund contingency? Is it 2.5%, 5%, 10% so that we can be comparable? My other um, comment is I really would like staff and city managers to say, we have a budget of, I don't know, $240 million. Um, is this contingency? No. I mean, our city manager is our number one employer. She runs our staff. She runs the daily things. Is is no contingency or discretionary or this amount work for a city manager? I just want to know the staff's uh, response to it. Uh, let me let me try. Um, I can only compare to the position I had before, which was a large operation. The budget there was one hundred and eighty six million dollars approximately year after year. Um, and my contingency was one and a half million. Um, it, mostly it's um, it was made for, um, you know, breakage because it, as you have an aging infrastructure, the, the more aged your infrastructure is, the more prone to unforeseen breakages and emergencies you have. So um, because we have an aging infrastructure and it's beyond some of its useful life, um, you just have to have something like that. Uh, but I appreciate you know the, the focus on that and making sure that there's proper spending. Um, it'll be it'll be tight in my experience, but willing to try it if there's some flex, of course, I'm not speaking for myself anymore, but the city manager will need some flexibility. And um, because public servants are trained uh, to treat public dollars with sensitivity, we don't, I'm not going to go spend contingency if there's no need to spend it. It's basically an emergency fund for things that we just did not anticipate. So my other question is about the credit card statement. We do get uh, reports um, of the, all the itemized statements um, every three months, and I see a lot of credit card statements. Does it add up to $500,000 a year? Is that where um, credit card spending is? Because um, we do see the itemized. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and I want to make sure that um, folks know that when, you're, when you see the credit card statements, those are typically, when you see the range that um, Council Member Moore attributed to some of the statements that she has seen, it's for basically materials, right? It's a, it's a way to buy, to buy materials so that you can do the work. And so what happens is those expenses will be costed against the budget that's appropriated in this particular budget, for example. So you're, it's not an extra $500,000 over here. It's the purchase of materials that's built into the budget. So um, my comment is, yes, we our council member's job is to check and balance, make sure the money is spent where it's spent. But we are not going to, we should not micromanage how, how do I say that? We need to give certain level of our city managers running such a big budget, some contingency and um, um how do I say that? You know, contingency and discretionary fund. Because they can't come to us every once, every so often to ask us for money. But that balanced and checked report back how they spend the money is what uh, we should do. We are, you know, making policies and check and balance. So I'm hoping we can reach a consensus of a reasonable amount of discretionary and contingency and we can try it try it out but to to say none or to say a really small amount for such a budget it's going to be challenging for our city manager to to manage such a running it, our city is running okay serve our our residents park and recreation uh, works it just it, tons of things that we're not seeing that's doing and our job is to make sure the budget is spend where it is. Yes, ask questions, make sure we check balanced, our public fund is well spent, but not to tie our staff and our city managers hands and feet that you have to report to us every time you need something. So I hope we can strive a balance, you know, maybe not two and a half percent, but one percent so that we can, uh, like uh, Mayor said, once a quarter, maybe it's spent, we can add it more. If it's not spent, we don't need to add more. So we can do that, but to really tied your hands and feet and so they cannot operate. They have to ask us everything. That is not what, um, I think that's just a little tough. Okay. And it, it's just, we're looking at an agency that's running this big budget and we need to trust our city, but not trust, but we check and balance. So I'm hoping that we can strike a balance. Okay. Thank you. Council member way. Next we have council member Moore followed by vice mayor Chow. Council member Moore, you have floor. Okay, uh, so with regards to the, you know, five hundred thousand dollars, if it is materials, uh, there, it, the, the credit cards were um, brought up uh, to the audit committee um, in the enterprise risk assessment as being an area where there's uh, potentially um, a lack of control. And uh, so, if it is material, then I would think that you know. Probably using purchase orders and having this the city uh, buying it uh, rather than having individuals using a credit card because it leads me to wonder what what sort of materials are is someone in the public information office needing or uh, you know if, if if computers are needing to be purchased it seems to me that that would be something through through IT and that that this uh, needs to be looked at and and I think the audit committee um, could certainly be tasked um, with that uh, it is a little bit out of um, out of our our purview, but I, it seems that that could be something that that we can do. I don't know if, if it is out of our purview or not. Um, and uh, with regards to the the contingency, I I, I agree with the request from uh, Council Member Way uh, to to get some information from the cities around us. Um, I pulled up. Campbell and, and Sunnyvale's budgets to, to do a comparison about uh, formatting um, and, uh, and looked into contingencies there. And uh, so I look forward to having the report back. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Moore. Vice Mayor Chow. And I'll remind everyone that we're about, um, we're a little more than 20 minutes uh, shy of 11. So um, after this round, um, and try to keep it to within a few minutes, Council Member, uh, Vice Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. May I, <clears throat> excuse me, may I just add a little bit that between Council Member Moore's request for um, contingency amounts from other cities, plus 
um, council member ways request as a percent, I think those two pieces of data together will be very helpful because if you have an absolute amount, it's probably more meaningful as a percent of the budget or as a percent of something because every city's budget is going to be bigger or smaller and not exactly the same size. Okay. Uh, council member ways request is not formally part of the uh, staff direction at this point. And so I'll uh, go ahead and ask the movement, uh, Councilmember Moore, Moore, if she'd like to add that information to the uh, information that comes back to us on June 15th. Uh, uh, yes, but it needs to be uh, similar to ours for it to be meaningful. So ours is a percent of materials plus contract services. Um, so if it's done the same way, then we're, we're, we'll be able to have it uh, make sense. Okay, so more information is better than less, uh, essentially, uh, what, what we're saying here, so we can figure out if we're comparing apples to apples or apples to oranges. Uh, Vice Mayor Chow, we have to hear you. Um, yeah, yeah I, um, I think um, reason, I think some contingency makes sense, and then the because the contingencies were built in, but they never used that actually means the staff has been doing well to not go over their estimate the budget right so is not a good thing so because it's not used that not a reason to cut back because that just means um, there hasn't been unexpected things so that's good I, I think we should still support the contingency um, and it's not as if because there is a contingency, the staff will be motivated to use it up as proven they didn't. So I don't see why is that a big concern there. Um, maybe it's a good idea to see what, how other city does it. Mm, yeah. Okay, thanks Vice Mayor Chow. Um, I'll, I'll make a comment. Um, yes, I agree with the um, structural uh, potential um, risks with regard to the over usage of credit cards. It was a um, it was an issue that I pointed out about three years ago now, and so I think that it would be good to follow up on that. So, in addition, on the information that um, Councilmember Moore is asking for from the three cities that she identified, I believe they were Saratoga, Sunnyvale, and Mountain View. But um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to ask uh, our staff as well to go back and find us the credit card usage budget uh, of those uh, cities if that information is available um, and um, or the actual credit card usage. And um, Council Member Moore, I'd like to ask uh, that you amend your motion to include that information as direction staff to come back at us on June 15th, uh, if possible with that. Yes, um, and it was, uh... Campbell, Sunnyvale, and uh, Mountain View. Okay, Campbell, Sunnyvale, and Mountain View, not, not Saratoga. Okay, great. Um, so I will go ahead and second that as the seconder of your motion. And then with regard to, uh, with regard to the contingency of the city manager, you know, I'll, I'll say it again. I, I think this is a number that is in flux and we're responsibly uh, responding to the, the usage in flux. And again, if, if, if we run into uh, a thorny situation over the course of a, a month or a, a month and a half where we find ourselves coming back multiple times uh, because of the lowness of this contingency. My recollection several years ago is that what happened was that is why the contingency um, increased to the number that it is at right now. I, I think it was probably a backward look in comparing that to the percentage of the actual budget um, but that was that was a need uh, of that time. And so I think we should respond to the actual usage and, and that would be in fact the responsible thing to do. Um, so I do support the motion as it is on the table. I see uh, a hand raised from Vice Mayor Chow. At this point, I'm gonna start imposing time limits on wrap up comments. Um, so we're at 1042, let's say two minutes for, uh, for each council members if you'd like to. Uh, and, and then I will be uh, asking for a vote um, and, and of course, you know, if there's anybody who would like to call that question, um, feel free at that point. Vice Mayor Chow, you'll have two uh, minutes. I wonder if the motion could include direction for the audit committee to 
um, be more involved with uh, studying the budget, as Council Member Moore pointed out, and also increase the frequency of audit committee meeting to maybe um, month, year by month, because um, we are also looking into the internal audit um, that will be looking to different departments. I think um, we might need additional meetings rather than only four times a year. That's in the cold right now. Uh, let's see what your movement has to say about that request. Uh, Councilmember Moore, would you be willing to accept a um, friendly amendment to uh, include the material, the, the 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 scope that Vice Mayor Chow is asking uh, with regard to the audit committee? Yes. You would. Okay. Uh, uh, that that is fine. So, Vice Mayor Chow, can you repeat the first part of it? Uh, I understood the second part, which was to increase the scope. Uh, increase the frequency of the audit committee meetings to monthly. What was the first part of your motion again? Or, or your um, I think Council Member Milmore probably, she mentioned uh, something he, she would like audit committee to study. So I would like let her elaborate. Oh, okay. So um, that was with regards to, to looking more in depth at the, the credit card um, uh, portion of the budget uh, and um, just to do a spot check and, and verify uh, what's going on with that in more detail. I don't think I don't know that we're we are currently tasked for that, um, but we I could leave it more vaguely that we um, that we are uh, empowered to look more specifically into the budget. Let, let, let's keep it more narrow. Let, let, let's just let's specifically identify the credit card usage as. Uh, within the scope of the requested scope by council of the audit committee uh, purview um, and examination for this year. Um, okay. okay so this upcoming uh, fiscal year. Uh, okay, so those two items, I accept that as uh, the seconder of the motion. Um, all right, I don't see any other hands up at this point. Um, can we please uh, conduct a roll call vote uh, Madam City Clerk. Uh, Mayor Paul, can we exactly know what are the motions? We've been adding a lot of things. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and please correct me if I am um, if I'm omitting any of the details. Um, my recollection of the mo well, actually, uh, Madam City Clerk, have you been recording uh, the changes as the motion goes along? Right? Because it's more appropriate for me to uh, go go to uh, staff first on this. I have, um, and Christina can perhaps, or Zach can perhaps help me with these, but um, so rectify the ECD budget unit 171-705 and 112-705. The 2019 actuals don't match and um, they show zero full-time employees when staffing might be different. So um, review that. Um, the city manager discretionary amount. Uh, oh, okay. So this may have changed. This was her. Uh, I, I read. Seven. I track these in a linear fashion, um, regardless of whether or not they get adopted. But I'll, so I'll just read through. Um, let me just. Well, it, so, it ended up at seventy-five thousand. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, for the uh, councilmember Willie made the friendly amendment, amendment for the city manager discretionary amount to seventy-five thousand dollars per year and to um, conduct a check in six months or quarterly. Um, and Council Member Moore accepted the friendly amendment with, the, with, um, with uh, a comparison of budget amounts for the cities of Sunnyvale, Campbell, and Mountain View. And- um, Sorry, my understanding when I seconded it, it, it did not have the check-in in six months or quarterly, that was vague. The specific change to 75,000, uh, I did agree to second that. Um, for the city manager's contingency budget. Uh, okay. So, so, so remove the check-in at six month or quarterly. Well, I, I just I didn't I didn't understand that to be part of the friendly amendment at that point. Okay. Uh, but we should check in with the uh, movement as well because that was an accept. Um, Council Member Moore, did you understand uh, that to be the case that we're only looking at seventy five thousand dollars? Uh, as of the adjustment, and it wasn't the six months or three months check-in uh, that we correct. Were correct. I didn't. I didn't catch the the check-in part. As, okay. As part of the motion. Okay, I'll remove that. Um, 
and uh, Councilmember Moore was, um, uh, so Councilmember Way made a suggestion um, regarding the contingency, uh, I guess, uh, follow-up information um, uh, regarding a, a percentage of the materials plus contract services, was that? Right, um, in the case of Mountain View, uh, Sunnyvale, and, uh, and Campbell. And Campbell, okay. Um, and so, uh, um, this info uh, will will be included when it comes back on June fifteenth, and, um, and then uh, Vice Mayor would like um, to include direction for the audit committee um, regarding looking more um, in depth at the credit card um, portion of the budget. Um, and, and, and increase the schedule of the audit committee to one month. Uh, yes, and increase frequency of meetings um, to monthly. And I wasn't, I was just checking the uh, ordinance. Um, if I may, I just wanted to read the frequency of the meetings. The audit committee shall establish a regular. Uh, uh, I did that too. It was okay. Okay. One regular meeting quarterly. So okay. Conflict. <laughs> at least so that's all no, that, yeah. that is i believe that is everything unless uh zach has something to add or christina didn't mayor paul add something he wants to check something too um i wanted to check on the um uh, on the credit card usage which i oh. think is captured uh, okay in, not from the other city i thought you added something you want some other information from the city no, no that was it okay was and so um I didn't quite hear the statutory recitation. So, the um, the code specifies once quarterly. Is that correct? Um, if I may, um, at least one shall they shall hold at least one regular meeting quarterly. Well, I, I don't see why that would conflict with the code if it says at I, least. One quarterly. I was just reading out loud. I'm sorry. I just I just uh, um, wanted to confirm that we were just confirming that it didn't. Yeah. Oh, it does, it does not. Okay. That's right. So, so we're fine and we don't need to give staff direction to modify the municipal code. Um, okay. Uh, great. So that's, that's the motion. Um, council member way, that was your uh, request. And, and I will add that council member way did ask for more, uh, expansion of information with regard to comparisons of contingencies across departments between us and those cities as well. Uh, while yes. Council member more asked for, um, more detail if possible so that we can make, um, you know, more valid comparisons between the city usage of funds and uh, contingency considerations. Okay, so we have that motion. Um, Madam City Clerk, would you please conduct the roll call vote? Sure. Council Member Moore? Aye. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, well, um, with nothing further, I bid you all a great week. Uh, we have gotten you out 11 minutes, uh, nine minutes before 11. And so um, thanks very much for a, a job really well done to uh, all of our uh, public, uh, our staff, my fellow council colleagues. I thank you for um, you know your sacrifices as well and um, for uh, enduring all the praise of the public. So um, thanks so much and have a great night.